Hi, this is Peyton with Anderson Optimization, and I'm just going to walk you through um, how to create a siding project in the software AO. Um, so here is just kind of a layout of the general workflow of your project. Um, so we'll be going through these steps here. So you can see the first step is to select that point of interest, um, whether it be a substation or a line that you want to go in and search for land around or um, if you already have a parcel in mind and you want to go in and kind of analyze that. So kind of three different um, points of interest that we can start with. So I'll go um, to our software. So when you log in, you'll be brought to the dashboard. Um, up here is where you can choose what state that you're going to be doing your project in or go view other projects. So you'll just use this drop down here to go to the preferred state that you want to be in. Um, and then we'll have recently viewed projects here um, where you can view all your projects in the state. And this is where we'll, we'll, where we'll create projects. And then also we have an assets map that way you can see um, all the assets um, in Connecticut, kind of just like a, um, a good overview of the state itself. So we'll just start by creating a project and you'll just hit this create button right here. So here's the three different options we have to set up your project. So two green fielding options. One is if you're wanting to search for parcels in the close proximity to substations. Um, this one in the middle here, if you're looking to search around transmission lines. And then this third option um, is what we call a site analysis. So if you already have a specific parcel in mind that you want to go in and kind of evaluate its buildability um, and check out nearby grid and Good grid infrastructure, um, this option here would be the best. So again, just um, this is just split up into three different ways that you can kind of start your project flow. So for this example, I'm just going to choose um, greenfielding substation search. So I'll just sele hit select here. And then um, I'll just give this a name. So you're just going to name your project. You can fill, fill these fields out if you want to. Um, you can always come back to them later and edit those as well. So then I'll hit next here. And then um, for this workflow, for the substation search, it's automatically going to show me all the preloaded substation data that we have from um, the EIA data set. So you can start to zoom in here um, and look at those substations. Also, if you click on this magnifying glass here and expand that, um, you can type in an address or a city here to bring you right to that point if you know where a certain substation is. Um, same thing if you have coordinates, you can just um, paste those in here. And then again, it'll bring you right to that point. So feel free to use that search bar up here. If not, you can kind of just um, move around the map. Um, so a couple different options there. Um, so you can just click on the substation that you're interested in, and you'll get some data here for that. So we have the name and um, voltage of this substation. And to select the substation and add it to the project, we'll just hit select here, and then you'll see it come down in the table. Um, if you wanted to select a couple or multiple substations to start this project, you can do this as well or do that as well. You just need um, one substation to get started, though. So once you have your substation, you'll hit next and then create. Um, so now this project's officially been started. It's saved. You can come back to it, add to it, whatever you need to do. You can share um, the URL link amongst your coworkers that have an AO license. Um, so pretty collaborative there. And I just want to point out, if you hit your logo up here, it'll bring you back to the dashboard. You'll see that's in recently viewed projects. It's also going to be in the view projects map now um, here, and as well as this list view down here. So a couple of different ways to get back to that, to that project. Great. Um, so we've selected our point of interest. So next step here is going to be to find land um, nearby the substation. And then we'll also be able to see parcel boundaries, um, as well as some landowner information and data associated with those parcels as well. So next, I'm going to do a parcel search here. And if you just pull up this drawer from the bottom and go to this parcels tab here, this is where the parcel search, search is located. So I'll hit see actions on the right hand side here. Go to project tasks and parcel search. Um, this window will pop up. So you're just going to input um, criteria here, 
to tell the, you know, the software where you want to pull parcels from, what distance from the substation, and then also um, the minimum size parcels that you're wanting to pull in. So for this example, I'm just going to say I want to search for parcels within a mile of the substation, and I want them to be, um, let's say, at least 100 acres. So then we'll hit get count. This will give that, us that approximate number of parcels that fit that criteria there. Um, and that's only three, so I'm just going to um, bump this down to 50 acres and hit get count again, and you'll see it'll give us a new number there um, for the number that fits this criteria. So um, 15 now um, by changing that minimum acreage size there. So once you're happy with this number, you can go ahead and hit run, and that's going to pull those parcels into your project. Um, and then, yeah, you'll see those parcels that got pulled in. You can start to click on them. Um, and even as you zoom in a little bit, you'll see the landowner name and lot size. And then also you can click into them, get that landowner or name again. Um, lot size will be up here. And then some additional information like the APN um, site address, mailing address, um, zip code, school district IDs, data like that is down here as well. So again, you can kind of just move around, click into any of these parcels here um, and get that information. And then you can see there's kind of um, some funky shapes going on. So if you wanted to click into those um, and delete that, you can just right off the bat, say you're not you know, interested in that parcel or you don't even want to analyze it, you can just click in and hit this red trash can button to delete that. Um, so now we're left with these down here. And if you pull this drawer up from the bottom, you'll have that same data here in the table. So we'll have those landowner names here, um, the lot size, um, and then the like mailing and um, address information down here as well. And really quickly, I can show you too, you can kind of, if you wanted to just go ahead and sort by lot size right off the bat, you can just click on um, the header twice and then you can um, kind of organize it from greatest to least that way. And then if you want to look at parcels nearby, these parcels that you already pulled in, we can do that as well. So you'll just expand your layer catalog in the top right-hand corner. And then I'll just start, start to type in parcels here to pull up the parcel layer. And I'll just click on this to turn it on. And then you can see it loads um, with those orange borders here. So you can see... Um, neighboring parcels this way and get the landowner name fairly quickly. Um, so yeah, let's say for example, we pulled in, we already pulled in this um, Jarmok Farms parcel and there's a couple others here that didn't get pulled in because um, of the lot size. So if you wanted to go ahead and add those so we can analyze those as well, you just click into it and then um, hit create here. And then that'll pull that parcel in. And then I'll do that for this one as well. Just click into it and hit create, and then you'll see it turns blue. Um, and that means that that parcel has been added to the project as an asset here. Um, so yeah, you could um, kind of browse around this way and um, check out na neighboring parcels. And then again, add them um, one off if you need to um, through this process and having this layer turned on. So I'm just gonna turn this layer off and then um, yeah, minimize, minimize the layer catalog here. So now that we have our parcels pulled in, um, next step is to evaluate the buildability of these parcels. So um, we'll tell you know, the system what we consider a hazard and what setbacks we want around those hazards. And then it's going to run, um, um, it's gonna run a analysis on the back end, and then it'll build a constraint map for us. We can check those hazards out. It'll also calculate the buildable acres for us as well. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and run that and check out that step. So if we remain in this parcels tab down here and just hit the see actions project tasks and then go to project buildable area analysis, this is going to run the analysis on this whole project. So all 14 parcels that I've had, I've pulled in. Um, once you click that, it'll pull up this um, form here. So you'll just need to go through this um, and fill it out depending on, you know, exactly what things you're wanting to analyze for this specific site. 
So I'll just run through um, this and kind of talk through each one really quickly. So first is a parts, parcel boundary setback. So you'll just add this um, to have that buffer between the parcel boundary and what you consider or what you want to build on, um, just so you're not you know, building right up to the line there. Um, so it's just a more accurate number for you um, for the buildable acreage. So I'll just put a 50 foot setback here for that. And then we have slope. So you'll just toggle that on if you wanna analyze it. Here you can put in a max slope. So let's say um, we can't build, a, build on anything um, over a 10% slope. Um, that's what this setting will do here. You can also put in a setback from that high slope if you want to. And then we can analyze for flood zones. So 100 year flood zone and 500 year flood zone. Um, let's say we want a 100 foot setback from that 100 year flood zone. Um, and maybe we can build right up to the 500 year. So we'll just leave that blank. Um, if you can build on 500 year flood zones, you could always just uncheck this. Um, and that way, you know, those, the 500 year flood zone won't get picked up as not buildable. Um, but in this case, let's say we can't build on 500 years. So I'll keep that checked. And then we have um, wetlands to toggle on. And then again, you can put in a custom setback for wetlands um, to, you know, stay in this case, 50 feet back from, from that hazard. Um, if trees are an issue, you can toggle this on and put in whatever the max tree coverage percentage you are comfortable with. Um, so it's at the 50, again, you can change that. You can also put a tree coverage setback from those um, higher or more densely covered um, areas of trees. Um, so yeah, if trees are an issue and you wanna analyze that, feel free to toggle that on. Um, they're not an issue. You can just leave this toggled off here and it will analyze that. Same with bedrock depth, if that's an issue, you could toggle that on. Um, here you can put in the minimum bedrock depth. So let's say um, maybe you want at least eight feet of topsoil for um, you, can, you to consider it buildable. You could put in that. Same thing with the setback um, from that depth, um, if you want to have that there as well. And then we have infrastructure. So roads, buildings, transmission lines, railways, airports, and then oil and gas wells. So um, this will mark all of these things as hazards. Um, and then kind of same thing here with setbacks, you can put a different number for each of these, um, you know, whatever you're wanting or however far away you're wanting to stay away from these um, items here in infrastructure. And then last three, we have conservation easements, critical habitats and public lands. Um, so again, we can um, consider all, if you wanna consider all of these hazards, you would just toggle each of these on. And then again, if you want to set back for any of these, you can put that. So once you have those filled out, if you go all the way back to the top, there's one more setting, buildable area settings. Um, completely optional, but what this will do, um, here you can put in a minimum size buildable area. And we suggest to keep this number still relatively small. Um, so for example, I'll put, I want at least three, um, buildable acres to be considered buildable. So three contiguous acres. So that's what that's doing. Um, this way it'll get rid of, um, if there's like a one acre here and there that are isolated and buildable, it'll just get rid of those because you know they're surrounded by hazards and you're telling the system you need at least three buildable acres together to be considered buildable. Um, and then we have another setting to remove slivers, which are just gonna be those narrow sections of land that you may just consider too narrow for a raise. Um, so two to settings there, normal and aggressive. Normal requires a 40 meter width and aggressive requires a 100 meter width. Um, so yeah, that's an option as well. And then you could save this as a template. You just give it a name, hit create. That way the next time you run an analysis, you can just pop this template back in and um, run it after you put the template in. So I'll go ahead and hit run here and it'll run the analysis. Um, for you in the background. And also this is happening on our servers too. So if you did exit out um, or just wanted to come back to it later, um, you can do that and it'll be here um, once you come back to this project. But you can see the analysis happens fairly quickly here and starts to kind of pop in one by one. So yeah, um, it's completed. It'll tell you 100% up here. 
you can see this constraint map loaded for us. Um, yeah, really quickly, quickly, you can take a look at the constraint map. So this light green up here is going to be um, buildable area. And then we have all the hazards down here that we analyzed for. So you can start to go into a parcel and click on the buildable area. Um, and it's going to tell you what percentage of that parcel is buildable. So 69.73% of this parcel, and that's 102.25 acres. Um, so you can click into buildable area in any parcel. It's going to give you those numbers. So about 51% of this parcel and 42.86 parcels or acres are buildable in this parcel. You can also click into hazards. So I can click into this one. So this is a um, hundred year flood zone here, for example, this yellow is slope is greater than 10%. So feel free to click into any of those hazards and just check it out. And then you'll see these thinner white lines and that's the setback um, that I put from what or from the flood zone, for example, here. Um, we have some from buildings. So those white lines are gonna be your setbacks. And then if you click on the title constraint map, that's gonna turn all the drawings off. And then you could go in one by one and see just where each hazard is this way. Um, so if you just wanted to look at all the buildable area, you could just turn that on. If you're interested in looking at um, maybe the flood zones and where those are, you can turn those on as well. Um, same with slope. So this yellow is going to be all the areas that have greater than 10% slope there. Um, and then we have like some transmission line run through um, wetlands up here. So yeah, you can go through one by one if you want to. And then if we open this um, drawer back up from the bottom again, now we also have this column that's been populated, um, buildable acres or buildable area. Um, so you can check that out. Same thing I did before. You can sort this if you want to and look at you know which parcels have the most buildable area, for example. You can also filter these. So if you hit this filter button on the right hand side and go to buildable area, let's say you only want to look at parcels that have, um, let's say, 30 acres of buildable area. I'll just put in a 30 there. And then you'll see those get filtered out. They get filtered out on the table and the map. You, probably saw a couple disappear up here. So um, nine parcels fit that criteria of having at least 30 um, buildable acres there. And I'll just remove this filter and then you'll see those pop back in. We also have a star rating system in place. Um, so if you kind of want to keep track of what you've looked at and kind of organize yourself that way, you can do that. Um, and to do that, you'll just click into a parcel and go to the tab that has the landowner name there. And for example, I'll give this one three stars that has a lot of buildable area. Um, maybe this one I'll go in, you know, I'll just click on the tab that has a landowner name. Maybe I'll give this two. Um, and then let's see. This one I'll give one here. And then I'll just do one more. I'll give this one, let's give this one two. Um, so that, that's how you can kind of um, rate the, the parcels that way with the three star um, star rating that we have. And you can also rate off the table if you want to. So again, I'll pull this back up. And let's say we want to give this one three stars too. It has 51 buildable um, acres here. So you can rate from this as well. And then you'll see if I turn these constraint drawings off, um, the parcels style start to style off of what star rating you have there. So we can see the green is the three star rated parcels and then orange is two. Um, so yeah, it styles off of that as well. And then you can also take notes on a parcel and track site control status and agreement type. So if you wanna do that, you would just click into a parcel here and hit this pencil icon that, um, that says edit details. Um, so if you go to land details here, this is where you can track site control status. So let's say you have um, you know, maybe uh, offer delivered here and you want to keep track of that. And then we have agreement type that you can mark as well. And then you'll just click that and that'll automatically save. And then if you go all the way to the right, there's a notes tab. And this is more of a freeform text. Um, so you can put in anything you want here. I'll just say random note. 
and then that will save. And then you'll see you'll also be able to um, check those fields out in the table view if you want to. Um, so we have a site control status here. And then um, if you ever want to customize what columns here are in the table, you'll just hit this three dots over here in columns. Um, let me see. It. Okay, so notes is already in there. Um, an agreement type wasn't checked yet, so I'll go ahead and check that and add it. So now that will be here as well. So you can sort and filter off of these fields. And then same with um, the notes field. So yeah, you can see my note up here. Um, so again, if you just kind of want to keep organized that way and attach you know, notes and statuses to specific parcels, you can do that as well. And then also, we, like say we have some star ratings in here now. Let's say we go to filter and we just want to check out our three star. Or we only want to see our um, parcels that have three stars. You would just go to this star rating here and type in three, and then it'll filter that out for you. I found this on the web. Well, so um, after evaluating build buildability, um, we can sort, filter, and track, and that's also what I just went over. So um, adding notes to parcels, um, using the star rating process, um, same with site control status and agreement type. Um, and then lastly here is um, how to export your project. So we have a few different options that I'll go over. So once you're ready to export here, um, all the exports are gonna live up here in this blue export dropdown. So we have a KML and you'll just hit export here. And then I can open it in Google Earth and just show you what it looks like. So this is that this project that I just created here. So you can see the um, constraint map on here, um, landowner names and lot size as well. And then you can look at how the folders are, are nested here. Um, and these more are nested by drawing types like parcel boundaries, parcel markers, buildable area. So you'd be able to toggle those on and off in Google Earth. And then if you were to go back to the KML export and just toggle this on, um, it's going to look the same in Google Earth. It's just going to change the structure of the folders. This will be organized by per parcel, and then the drawings will be um, within the parcel folders. Um, so if you prefer that, that's an option. You'll just toggle this on here. Um, but again, the map itself looks the same. It's just the folder structure. And then we have a shapefile option. So if you ever want to export projects as shapefiles, you'll just export there. And then um, that'll download to your downloads. And then we have um, an Excel option. So if you want to export an Excel file or CSV, you'll go here and then just hover over parcels and click on that. And then on the right hand side is where you can select what columns um, you want to get exported. So I'll just go through and select a few. So we have name, um, distance from the primary asset, which is going to be the substation I selected. Let's see, acreage, buildable area, star rating, notes. And then we can do the mailing address information here. Um, let's say APN. And then there's a there's a lot of um, different fields that you can choose from, so you can keep scrolling here and just kind of decide what you're wanting in that um, Excel file. And then towards the bottom here is going to be more of the columns that relate to the buildable area analysis that we ran. So if you want to have that in the export, those are going to be closer to the bottom. Then we have latitude, longitude, as well. So I'll add those. So now you can see these are the columns that I've added. And I'll just export a CSV so we can take a look at that. So we have the landowner name here, distance from primary asset, lot size, buildable acreage, um, all the notes that you've taken on each parcel, and then the mailing address over here, and then lat latitude and longitude. Um, so that's the CSV, um, and then of course you can do an Excel file as well. And then if you wanted to, you could um, give this a name and create a template, and that way the next time you, you know, run a 
um, Excel export, you can just pop in a template that you've saved. And then that way you don't have to you know, go through and select each column that you want every time. And then we have um, export parcel images. So this is going to give us two PNG files for each parcel. Um, I'll go ahead and just hit run um, so we can take a look at this. Um, so yeah, it's going to be two PNG files. One will just be the um, outline of the parcel itself, and then one's going to have the buildable area analysis on it. Um, and you'll see once I open it up, you'll have these two files for every parcel in your project. I'll just give that a second to download. And then it uh, downloads in it as a zip folder down here. So I'll just open that up. And then you'll see this is that zip folder I just opened. So every parcel here is going to have its own folder. And then within that folder, the two PNG files I was speaking of. So we have one with the buildable area on it. And then we have just kind of a plain one. So this is that same parcel. So that's the. Um, parcel image export. So again, if you run that from here, you'll get those two PNG files for every single parcel in your project. Um, and then we also have an AO report. So that's going to give us those two PNG files in addition to a PDF report. So if I were to run it from this page, I would get an AO report for every single parcel, which is fine. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to do it on one parcel. Um, so to run a export on one particular asset. Um, if you just click into it and go and hit select, it'll pull up this um, new tab here with just this parcel. And then you'll see this export button is still here. So if I were to run any of these exports, it'll just be for this one specific parcel. So I'll do the AO report on this one and I'll hit run. And then again, we're going to have this two PNG files for this one. And then um, we'll also have um, the PDF report that gives us landowner detail. Um, and then it really dives in more so to the buildable area analysis. And then while that's loading, also just wanted to point out um, we have some user documentation. Um, so if you click the question mark next to your name and go to Help Center, this is where our, our user documentation is. So a lot of great workflow walkthroughs here. Um, and then like if you're interested in something for the buildable area analysis, for example, um, how to you know, add icons, et cetera, it's all here and kind of um, have, they have screenshots and kind of walk you through different, different, thing, different things, sorry. Um, so this is a good resource for you there. All right, looks like our um, AO report is finished. So I'll just open this up. So like I was mentioning, this two PNGs again. So I can I can open this. Um, so you'll have these. So if you want the PDF report and the images, um, you can just run the AO report and you'll get all three of those things for every parcel. And then the PDF report here. So the PDF report will look like this. We'll have the landowner name, lot size, um, just kind of an image of the parcel itself. And then here's a table of contents. So we have the parcel details, and then we go into the buildable area analysis, and you'll see each hazard kind of has its own page. So we have the parcel again. And then this blue marker dot is going to be where the parcel is within the county. And here's that parcel um, details page, same information that is there when you click into a parcel. Um, so, you know, name, site address, mailing address, um, 
land use, market value, if it's available, APN, data like that will be here. Then we have um, the second part of the PDF is really the, the buildable area analysis. So kind of a high level overview here. We can see how many um, acres are impacted by each of these hazards. So you can see high slope is affecting 16.3 acres, which is 24% of this parcel. Um, you know, seven acres um, are wetlands, so that's 10.3% of this parcel. And then we can see we have 23.8 buildable acres here in this parcel. And if you go down, the next sheet's going to be slope contour. So you can just kind of check out um, what this whole parcel looks like with this overlay. And then um, this page is going to be slope according to what you put in as the max slope percent. So I put 10 in. So this yellow area is everywhere that's greater than 10%. It's marking it as a hazard for us. So again, 16.2 acres, 24% of this parcel. And then no, set, no setback on that, um, on that high slope area. And then we have flood. Um, so there's only a hundred year flood zone found in this parcel. And you can see where that is. And then I also can see the setback that I have, um, which is in meters. So 30.5 uh, meters setback around this flood zone. And then we have wetlands here. It shows you where it is. Again, how many acres it's affecting and what percentage of the parcel that is. And then we have infrastructure. Um, so just buildings on this parcel. Um, so it highlights where those are there. And then public lands. So there's some up here. So it's highlighting that for us. And then here we can see all the setbacks. So the setbacks from buildings, the setbacks from um, that 100 year flood zone, and then the wetlands as well. So you can see um, everywhere that you know those setbacks are. And then the last page is always going to be um, hazards that you analyze. They just weren't found in this particular parcel. So this last page will always kind of go through this. So no bedrock depth issues or um, conservation easements or critical habitats here. So yeah, that's the AO report um, and a PDF. I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and yeah, that's the, those are the exports. So anytime you're done with a project or you need to you know, export, um, export the project and send it off or just have it in a different file, those are available for you up there. Um, so yeah, that is the substation project workflow. If you guys have any questions, um, again, this user documentation page um, is a great resource. Um, if not, we have a support email. It's support at andersonop.com. You can also get to it from this contact support page if you wanted to fill this out. Um, or again, you can just email us at support at andersonop.com. Um, if you guys have any questions or needed any pointers, we'd be more than happy to help you. Thanks.